In this video, we're going to finish setting up our Anaconda installation with the, with the packages we need to do our object-based image analysis. And we're going to start writing the Python code to do that image analysis. So I'm going to start by opening up my Anaconda prompt. I'm going to open up my Anaconda 3 prompt here. And I need to make sure I have a couple of packages. I need to make sure I have SciPy. I need to make sure I have scikit-learn, and I need to make sure I have scikit-image. And so once this prompt finishes loading, we'll go ahead and make sure that we have those installed. So first, let's start off by doing conda install scipy. And as always, this could take a few minutes to do, so I'm going to pause the video while that installs. Okay, so I've got the package downloaded now. And so I can check to make sure that my uh, that I have this package going conda list and typing scipy. And that'll pop up the information about my scipy installation. You should get here in just a sec. Okay, so you can see I have my, my scipy and the version number there. Now the next one I need to do is I need to get sklearn. We'll do conda install sklearn. Okay, and this is going to give us uh, machine learning algorithms like random forests that we can use for our classification. So we're going to install this. And once again, I'll pause the video while that installs. And it may be, um, I didn't find it here, so it might need to be conda install scikit. Learn. Let me just double check that package name so I get it right for you. Okay, so let's try this scikit learn and hit enter and we'll see if it finds that one. Okay, and that package is already installed, which is good. So we can just double check it by doing conda list scikit learn. Let's get our information about this package. Okay, so we have that. And let's just check and see if. Uh, scikit image is also installed. See if we have that one. And so we already have scikit image installed. Now if you need to install scikit image, you can always do conda install scikit image. I'm not going to do it because I already have it. All right, so that gets us all set up with the packages we need. Now I'm going to open up PyCharm. Okay, so here's PyCharm opened up. This is an example uh, script that I've written for this project. I'm going to start a new project um, for this so we can do it all together. So I'm going to go File and New Project in PyCharm. I'm going to create a project when this pops up here. Okay, so once I have this up, I'm just going to select the folder I want to save it to. And we'll call this one OBIA for object-based image analysis. You'll want to select an interpreter. And so here I have my uh, Anaconda interpreter selected down here. And if you want to select an environment, you can do that. I personally prefer to just use the interpreter. Uh, it could be better if you have a lot of environments to manage it that way. I'm going to go ahead and click Create here. And I'm just going to open it in a new window for me. And so we have everything here. All right, so we're good to go with an empty PyCharm project. Okay, so now let's open, let's start a new file. So I'm going to right click on my folder here, do new Python file, and I'm going to make a new file called OBIA and hit enter. So this will create a new file for object based image analysis. And I will zoom in on the code here. I'm not sure how far to zoom in. We'll start there. And now we need to import some things. So let's import NumPy as NP. Let's import SciPy. And we'll just start there for now. Now the next thing we need to do, let's define the paths to our, uh, our file. We're going to start out, let's actually start out with our uh, our NAPE file, the one meter resolution. 
So we'll call this um, Nate FN, and I'm going to go grab that path to my file here. And so that's going to be, I believe, in temp and Nate. And it should be that file there. So I'm going to copy this file name. So C temp nape. So C temp nape. And there's my file name. Okay, so we have that file name set up now. And there's one more important import I forgot. We need to make sure we import the GDAL because that's how we're going to read our raster data. So what we'll do first is we'll get a driver which will be gdal dot get driver by name and we need a geotiff driver. This will be used to write a file later. And then we need to open our NAPE data set. So we'll call NAPE, we'll get NAPE DS, and we'll call GDAL dot open our NAPE FN, and we can do this as read only, which is the default. So we don't even need to worry about anything else there. So now we have our NAPE data set opened, and this NAPE data set is going to have more than one band of data. So we want to get the number of bands, we'll call it N bands, equals nape ds and let me just look up the function here I can't remember exactly and so we want to do dot raster count and that will give us the number of bands um, in the raster and then we're going to loop through those bands um, and save the data so we're going to get band we're going to make a new variable band data which will be an empty list and we're going to append each raster band to that list. So we go for um, i in range and bands, and we're now going to do band equals nape ds dot get raster band i dot read as array. So this will read it as a numpy array, and then we can do band underscore data dot append band, okay? And let me just make a couple of changes here. Um, because the bands start at 1 and not 0, we need to make this in range 1 and n bands plus 1 to, so we don't get an indexing error when we run that. So that will give us all our band data, but now we want to include that in a single variable. So the way we can do that is we can go, we'll go now band data equals np.dstack, and this will create a stack of all our bands, and we'll do b for b in band data, and that will loop through all our bands and stack them all together. And let's just go ahead and make sure we get what we want here, and we'll do print band data dot shape. Okay, and also what we're going to do here is before we do this loop, we're going to print um, bands rows columns of the raster just to be sure we have things right. So we'll get that there. And here what we'll do is we want to go nape ds dot get raster, or sorry, raster count, not get, just raster count. Here we're going to do rows and we want to do um, nape ds dot raster y size comma and then for our columns and we're going to do the same thing but it's going to be nape ds dot raster x size ok 
Okay, so we're going to run this, and we run it. We should get a few things to print out. We should get a number of bands, rows, columns, and then we should get the band shape here at the end. So to run, I'm going to click on Run on the toolbar and the Run button here, and we can add this configuration for OBIA. So when I click on this, it will run, and it might take just a second here, but let's give it a chance to let it go real quick. Okay, it gave me an error saying the object is not callable, and that's because this is going to be a variable, a class variable, and not um, a function. So where you have those parentheses on a raster count, um, just get rid of those parentheses, and we will go ahead and click Run again, and we should get it to work this time. Okay, so there you go. We have four bands, and then we have that many columns. Okay. Okay, and so here we have a warning that a raised to a stack must be passed as a sequence type, such as a list or tuple. Um, and so we can't pass iterables. And what we should be able to do is because we already have this and bands is already a list, we should just be able to give it bands data. And let's see if that works. So we'll go ahead and click run. And as you can see, um, things didn't stack up quite right there. But let's see if we get this to work this time. Okay, so we should be good to go here now. We have our rows, columns, and bands showing up in our NumPy shape. All right. So here we have successfully taken our uh, data, our NAPE data. We've read them in. And we now have a stacked um, NumPy array with all our band data in it. So coming up in the next video, we'll start processing those with some of the image processing tools we get from the side kits we've installed. Um, and that will lead us on to doing the image analysis. And at some point here, we're going to have to break our data set up into training and test data sets. And we will do that as well. So thanks for watching. And like I said, stay tuned and we'll continue working on this through this video series.